The United States has announced a significant breakthrough in the quest for nuclear fusion energy. After more than 60 years of research, for the first time, a fusion experiment has produced more energy than was used to start the process. It's hoped that further development could one day create an inexhaustible source of clean energy. Fusion involves the same process that gives the sun its energy, but experts are warning that it'll be many years before the technology is ready for commercial use. Well, the breakthrough was announced by the head of the U.S. Energy Department, Jennifer Granholm. Uh, today, we're here to talk about fusion, combining two particles into one. Last week, at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California, scientists at the National Ignition Facility achieved fusion ignition. And that is creating more energy from fusion reactions than the energy used to start the process. It's the first time it has ever been done in a laboratory, anywhere in the world. Simply put, this is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. Let's look at this with Dr. Athena Kapatu, who's a research scientist in this field at the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics here in Germany. Welcome uh, to DW. Are you excited about this announcement? Oh, absolutely. As a fusion scientist, one can only be excited about such nice news. <laughs> and why? What is it about this that, that is so phenomenal? Well, any progress in fusion research is very important to all of us. So, of course, in fusion, we're trying to produce clean, abundant energy. We're trying to provide this to the world as an option because we know we're all looking for a carbon-free, clean, safe source of energy. And this is becoming more and more important as we are progressing in, in this century. And it'll become even more important in the coming years. So we, we are trying very hard, as you've heard before, for many decades to do this. So any news of success, both like the one announced by, um, by the NIF lab uh, today and also news that we We've we announced in the magnetic confinement fusion earlier this year are actually very encouraging that we're getting closer and closer to this goal. OK, explain to us then, if you can, in layman's terms, what fusion is and how it produces all this abundant clean energy. Exactly. So uh, fusion is the process in which we're trying to combine two very light nuclei into a heavier one. So by combining these two nuclei together, we have the release of energy. As you heard before, this is the process that powers up our sun. And the goal is to try to mimic this here on Earth. This is not an easy task, as you can imagine, as in the sun, it's very hot. We need also very high temperatures also here on Earth. So to make this fusion reactions work, we have to reach temperatures of about 150 million degrees. This is non-negligible. And there are many approaches to do that. So one of them is what we said before, magnetic confinement fusion. So we are trying to contain our fusion fuel with magnetic fields. This is where, for example, we're working on here in Germany, also in the jet facility in the UK. But there's also the inertial confinement fusion approach, which is what this achievement today was announced, and which are trying to very powerful lasers to compress the fuel to reach the conditions needed for these fusion reactions to happen, to produce the heat, which we can then, in the next step, turn into electricity. OK, I've been taking notes. We're going to have a test later. Um, does this technology have any downside? In 200 years, we'll be going through a similar process of regret as we're going through now with carbon-based fuels. No, none, none that we can see, in the sense that we are not only promising something that is carbon-free, but we're promising something that is safe. We don't have any long-lived radioactive waste. We know that this can is we have a fuel that is abundant. We can get both our deuterium and tritium. These are the light nuclei that we want to fuse together to get the energy out. This, this is these is are also available. So we do believe, and we can show that it's possible to have this as a abundant source of energy that can cover the demands we are having and will have even more in the future. So once this is commercially scalable, is it likely to be the preserve of only the richer countries? 
So as you said very well, these, it's the scalability and how to make it commercially available that is the trick here. Uh, as you've heard uh, also from the scientists at NIF, uh, or you can hear, is that this is a long-term process. This is very demanding. We're working for years and I share the feeling of the scientists announcing the results of the perseverance required for this. Um, our goal is to make this scalable, to make it financially um, possible. But of course, it is at the end for the society and for the politics to receive this as an option. The idea is, of course, that by offering this option, no matter where it takes place, it does relieve the demand. It does make it better play, made a better solution for our planet and for our issues. So I want to believe that as scientists, our job is to provide this option for society to take over. Okay, well, we wish you well in your endeavours. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Dr. Athena Kapatu from the Max Planck Institute. Thank you. Thank you for having me.